Ball was just too low. I believe that was Malcolm Stone in coverage. Fourth down and six. At about that 29-yard line. Incomplete to the clock. Stop. 345. As John Middletown has gone for a lot of fourth downs tonight. As uh, Del Percio, very, very aggressive. And it's paid big dividends. I think uh, at their own 29, Wade is going to kick it away. But CR has nobody deep. They put pressure. That's Wicks trying to block it. Almost did. And they went for the home run, trying to block it. So the ball bounces to about at that 22-yard line of the Riders. At this point, it was desperation. You needed the block to try to get a quick score as you're down 43 to 14 333 left in this contest that's right and unfortunately uh for the riders it seems like everything that the cavaliers have attempted has worked uh this evening all the way back to uh, one of those critical possessions where they were fourth and short and uh they lined themselves up with Wade, of course, who is the punter and the quarterback, so they weren't sure whether or not they would punt, but then they wound up throwing it to Godwin. They get the first down, and, of course, it's a tremendous uh, momentum builder and an energy shift. The first down and 10 at the 23. Wing T formation. Kemp still in the game under center. Hand it off. That's Watkins up the middle near that 34-yard line. Three twenty-six. As the fans for Middletown, they're starting to exit. Well, I guess they do. That's part of their tradition, and they realize when you come about five thousand strong in a stadium, almost for every game, if it's already wrapped up, they're probably trying to get out early. It's first down and ten at the thirty-three. It's a running play, off tackle. And a ball carrier, Cody Connell, takes a pass at first down marker at about the 47, 46 yard line. 309, fourth quarter, 43 to 14. First down and 10, 46 yard line. Kemp under center. Man in motion. It's handed off the Watkins. 50, 45, breaks a couple tackles, makes it to the 40-yard line, and Cesar Rodney and Middletown are pushing one another. I believe that's number 61 against number 34 for Middletown. Mike Serrero, and there's another flag. I wonder if somebody was tossed. It looks like they might have put a couple of flags out there, but I think the referees, and that looks like Glenn Slayton out there officiating, who's been officiating for years, and it looks like they're just kind of making a decision to say, fellas, settle it down. We know there's got a lot of emotion invested in the game, and they understand that there's a little bit of energy and testosterone going on out there on the field, and they're just going to probably just make a couple of calls and let it settle itself. First and a five against Caesar Rodney. And Del Percio clapping. And now it's going to be taken all the way back to the CR part of the field. About the 29-yard line, 248, fourth quarter, 43-14, Middletown with the lead. We got five, two. We got five, two. 52 going to the sideline for CR. 241, Kemp still 
in this contest. Under center. Wicks lined up on the far side, man to man coverage. He pitches it, that's Connell. Right side, still on his feet, 35, 40 yard line, past the first down marker. And it's a first down, so the clock stops. 224, 43 to 14. First down and 10 at that 41, Kemp. Under center, wing T formation. Wicks now lined up on the near side. It's a toss, and that's Watkins on the right side. And that's a false start against the Caesar Rodney Riders. And that's a legal procedure against the Ryder offense, 208. Fourth quarter, 43 to 14. And John, even though Caesar Rodney, they're going to lose, we have to, at the end of the game, come up with the Delaware Electric player of the game. Well, I certainly see somebody out there who's put in a, uh, an, a lion's job, a lion's share of the work. First down at 15 at the 36. Handed off straight ahead, 50. 45, takes it near the... 40-yard line of the Cavaliers. That's Naquan Watkins. Past the first down marker for Caesar Rodney. Clock stops at 144. First down and 10 at the Cavalier 45. Kemp has the play from his head coach, Mike Sean Wolf. And this is going to be the last drive for Alex Kemp, the senior. Playing for the Riders. Wing T formation. He rolls out, scrambles to the 45, the 40. About a five yard gain on the left side. Just scrambled to his left. And, you know, we talked a little bit about the fact that Kemp was the, uh, you know, he was our co player of the uh, game last week. And his, you know, he has good football in his genes, but, you know, he is also. Um, First cousins to God went out there, so they're part of a football family, a football playing family, as that is his first cousin. Second down and three at the 38, straight ahead running, Dominique Dorsey. And he gets the first down near that 28 yard line, 48.7 seconds remaining in this game, as the clock will stop since it's the first down. Clock continues to start up. 40 seconds. First down and 10 at the 29. Wing T. Kent rolls to his left. Back to pass. He throws it up in the air for Wex. Comes down with it. About at the one yard line with 28.1 seconds remaining in this game. And he's been quiet all game, but they finally uh, wind up going ahead and tossing one to him. 28 seconds remaining, and I don't think the Caesar Rodney Riders are going to come back. But boy, what an outstanding, uh, outstanding for them! Is they they really had you know, a, a, quite a, a, a nice season, and have worked their way all the way out here to the uh, semifinals. First but uh, they lost to a tougher team at the one yard line, straight ahead running, and it's a touchdown, Alex Kemp. Quarterback keeper, 43 to 20, 24 seconds remaining in this game. As the Middletown Cavaliers will advance to the championship game next weekend at the University of Delaware. Kemp, the placeholder. Steidel for the extra point attempt. Ball's down. No, the shovel pass. That's Dorsey. And a nice quick play. And Dorsey right there. Uh, and he's had, a, he's had a fantastic outing. I mean, he really has been a tremendous contributor for them, and they needed that. Still a little bit of a breath of fresh air. As a Dorsey gets in for the two points, 43-22. to 22. 
as it's 24 seconds of remaining in this contest. They're going to lose, but Caesar Rodney's still fighting till the end. And you got to like the fact that the Riders, too, came out and showed they got a little bit of a, you know, a few trick plays up their sleeves as well. And it looks like there's going to be a quarterback change with a, about 20 seconds left. Vincent Del Percio, the sophomore, he's warming up. As Kemp had the touchdown run and Dorsey with the two-point conversion. And here we have an onside. Stoddard getting ready to kick it off from his 40. Lined up on the near, he kicks Got it. a nice looking kick. It bounces to the Middletown Cavalier player at the 45 yard line and he pounces on it with 23.5 seconds left in this game. 43 to 22. And you know, I'll tell you what Anthony, um, it looks like the game might be uh, heavily decided. I see, uh, looks like we've got a, a former Middletown Cavalier football player right here. The uh, big brother of Chris Godwin is here, Zori Godwin, a recent Rutgers graduate. Okay. And going to Western Illinois for graduate school. Uh, he is another example of a fine Cavalier. Del Percio. And they son. do the Quarterback change. The gentlemanly thing. And takes a knee, and that's going to do it 16 seconds as the Middletown players run onto the field at midfield to shake the hands of the Caesar Rodney Riders. Five seconds. And fans that are still here with their cowbells and some with their megaphones. And that's going to do it. At the end of the fourth quarter, the Middletown Cavaliers 43. He's a Rodney 22. We're back after this. Hi, this is Laura Witt. My family has operated Witt Brothers Market for over 30 years with a dedication to customer service and quality products. Witt Brothers Market is your hometown market where you'll always get hometown service. We're a part of the community and always will be. Stop in and see us soon. Whit Brothers Market on Camden, Wyoming Avenue in Wyoming. If you have any questions, call us, 697-6174. Proud sponsor of CR High School Sports. Got metal? Get it to Fitzgerald Salvage and Recycling. Fitzgerald's pays you cash. Fitzgerald Salvage and Recycling is environmentally friendly and helping to keep Delmarva clean and green by recycling. So bring your copper, aluminum, and brass, stainless steel, wire, lead, light iron, heavy steel, tractors, farm equipment, lawnmowers, and appliances, barbecue grills, aluminum cans, even cars and trucks. Fitzgerald's is local and family-owned since 1935. Jesus recycles people. Fitzgerald's recycles cars. It'd sure be nice to get out of the house. Get a change of scenery. And try the wonderful atmosphere and homestyle food of Smith's Family Restaurant. We'll treat you like you're coming to our house. We're known for great seafood, the best beef and chicken dumplings around. And you've got to try the homemade sweet potato biscuits and homemade rolls. A great place to eat anytime, seven days a week for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Smith's Family Restaurant. It's worth the drive to eat at Smith's. On Route 13 in Greenwood. Call 349-5114. Is Del One Federal Credit Union right for you? If you live in Delaware, the answer is yes. All Delaware residents can become a member of Del One. Call us at 302-739-4496 or stop by any of our convenient branch locations throughout Delaware to find out how. Visit del-one.org for more information on the amazing benefits Del One Federal Credit Union has to offer. Become a member today. Conditions and restrictions apply. Equal opportunity lender. Deposits are federally insured by NCUA. Stop in and see the friendly, courteous staff at First State Chevrolet on Route 113 in Georgetown for all of your automotive needs. We are located in the heart of Henlopen Conference football country, just a short drive from anywhere in Lower Delaware. We carry the full lineup of new Chevrolet cars and trucks, as well as a great selection of Chevrolet certified pre-owned vehicles. Check out the new Silverado pickup, which is all new for this year, and also, we're your exclusive dealer in Lower Delaware for the new Corvette Stingray. Our employees make the difference here at First State Chevrolet. Stop in and see how we put you, the customer, first. When severe weather strikes, a Generac generator from Satterfield and Ryan will keep your home running smoothly 
and your family safe and secure. Satterfield & Ryan is Delaware's only elite power pro dealer, providing professional sales, superior service, and quality repairs. Satterfield & Ryan in Milford, online at DelawareGenerators.net. Call 302-422-4919. Satterfield & Ryan, get the job done right the first time. Do you want a great sounding chainsaw like that? Make sure you select one of the new generation of chainsaws at Milford Southern States. Try the MS-171 Steel Chainsaw. With its reduced emission technology, it requires less fuel consumption and limits the exhaust you will breathe. This innovative machine can be used to tackle small trees, cut firewood, or routine cleanup. So stop by Southern States in Milford or call 422-8066. You're listening to Friday Night Under the Lights with CatchItLive.com's play-by-play announcer, Anthony Joseph, on Hot Country 107.7 FM. Back live in Middletown as you're listening to Friday Night Football under the lights on catchalive.com and Hot Country 1077. Dell 1 out of town scoreboard, St. George's 37, Woodbridge 21, and that's a final as St. George's advances to the Division II state championship next weekend at Delaware University. The final here tonight, John, 43 to 22 as the Caesar Rodney Rodders. They fall short of their quest to make it to the championship game. Eight and four on the year as Middletown, 10 and one. Their only loss at the hands of Slazy Annum in week number 10. That's John, right. uh, what, uh, go ahead, what are your thoughts? I was just going to say, uh, again, hats off to uh, Cesar Rodney. What a fine season, their first class organization. Coach Sean Wolf and his staff, they've done a fantastic job with the Riders, and they certainly did seem to get a lot of uh, mileage out of the personnel. Uh, I did feel that uh, today they might have been uh, they might have been properly served if they could have capitalized on some of the powerful uh, movement and you know uh, ball carriers in the middle, and that might have opened up the uh, awesome airplay of uh, the quarterback Kemp, but all in all, a great season for them. They've done a fantastic job, and I look forward to seeing what they do next year. John, I'd like to thank a wireless zone of Verizon Wireless Premium Retailer, three locations, Milford, Harrington, and Middletown. Now it's the time that I look forward to week in and week out at the end of the game. It's I'd the be shocked Delaware if you Electric weren't. player of the game. I'd really. be shocked if you didn't, Anthony. Who do you think was the player of the uh, game? I mean, certainly there were some spectacular performances today. Maybe well, can you just tell me a couple that really you don't I was really excited about uh, the uh, performance of uh, Darius Wade. Okay, Numerous yep. touchdowns, and he's the quarterback for the Middletown Cavaliers. He is the Delaware Electric player of the game back in week number two when Middletown was victorious 41-6 to against the Caesar Rodney Riders in Camden. He was also the Delaware Electric player of the game. Now, John, Caesar Rodney does not advance. Woodbridge does not advance. Tomorrow night, it's the Dover Senators on the road against Slazy Anim at Baynard Stadium. And next uh, weekend at the University of Delaware, we're going to do a Division I state championship final. And we'll have to see, is it Middletown versus Sally's or Middletown versus Dover? Either way, it will be a tremendous game for the players, a spectacular game for the fans because both teams have a tremendous amount of a fan base. I mean, you've got the storied relationship between uh, Middletown and uh, Sally's because Coach Donardo was the coach here on this football field way before they had the um, AstroTurf out here, back when it was just tough turf, dirt, and cowbells out here. And Del Percio coached, and he's also been a mentor for, uh, for Coach Del Percio. Uh, those two teams would make a, a, a dynamic matchup. But if Dover comes up uh, victorious, then you've got two 
offensively electrifying teams that would be going head to head and it would be an awesome opportunity for Dover to uh, seek some come up and, and some vengeance for uh, some earlier loss to the Cavaliers. As the Dover centers to reset uh, that matchup for tomorrow, they're number three seed, nine and two on the season. Defeated St. Mark's twice, one in the regular, one in round number one last weekend. And they're taking on the number two, Slazy Annum, nine and one on the season. The big win, as we mentioned, against the Middletown Cavaliers. John? I'd like to thank you uh, once again, and I'll see you uh, next uh, weekend at the uh, University of Delaware. As the final tonight, Caesar Rodney, 22, Middletown, 43. I'd like to thank our producer, Colin Walls. I'm Anthony Joseph for John Martin. Until next weekend, so long, everybody. This game is brought to you by Del One Federal Credit Union. Southern States of Milford, Smith's Family Restaurant, First State Chevrolet, Satterfield and Ryan, Witt Brothers Market, Jen Moore Flores, Wireless Center, Weller's Utility Trail, Wall Service Center, and Delaware Electric Co-op. This broadcast has been a presentation of Catch It Live and Sports on Del Mar. Any rebroadcast or reproduction without written consent of Catch It Live and Sports on Del Mar is strictly permitted. Thank you.